Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another great interview series. Uh, my name is Meher from Vancouver, BC. And today I have the privilege to interview Jeremy Tiffin. Hi, Jeremy. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Meher. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for Good. being here. Uh, Jeremy is based in North Van. Uh, he's an expert in the recruitment of supply chain and finance professionals. Since making his first placement in 1998, Jeremy has steadily progressed through a variety of roles in the search business and in 2007 created Horizon Recruitment, which today is Western Canada's largest specialized supply chain and finance recruitment firm. In October 2013, Jeremy founded Scene, a not-for-profit organization comprised of senior executives within the supply chain sector working collaboratively for innovation across industries. And in, in November 2014, Jeremy won top 40 under 40 as recognized by business in Vancouver. So Jeremy, welcome. A very wide of variety of uh, experiences that you had. And from, uh, from the uh, contract growth or uh, agency uh, experience, uh, my first question is, when I moved here to Vancouver eight years ago, I was a little bit surprised to see a lot of agencies providing services and contract jobs. So why there's a lot of contract jobs and what are the benefits for people going to this job or for new immigrants or in between jobs? So if you can elaborate more from your experience, I'll appreciate yeah. it. Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to. It's, it's a good question. Um, so the reason for demand on the contract side, well, there's a variety of reasons. We, if we take a look at work or labor, there's different ways that um, you, you can provide labor. Full-time permanent employment is only one form of how labor can be um, uh, provided in, or, in an organization. And when you look at contract work, Meher, Contract operates at every level of the organization, from reception all the way to the CEO. Yeah. Um, a CEO probably wouldn't be called a temp. <laughs> a receptionist may be called a temp. Yeah. And in between that would be interim consulting or contracting, right? And so organizations will utilize uh, individuals on an interim basis at every level of the organization for a variety of reasons. Um, it could be for a maternity leave coverage. It could be for sick coverage. It could be for the implementation of a system where it's a project-based initiative. Um, when you look at the construction industry, for example, a project will only last a certain amount of time, and an organization may not need to add full-time headcount to their payroll, <laughs> so they'll bring somebody on on an interim basis. And you may have a senior executive that's running that project and then contractors right through the entire team that are working on an interim basis. So those are, those are some, I mean, there's, there's a variety of other reasons as well, but those are some of the reasons why there's so much demand uh, for interim resources. The other thing is when you look at how labor is provided globally now, We've all heard of the gig economy, right? Yes. So the way that organizations are utilizing resources is shifting and changing, and the propensity to hire people on a project basis to deliver a specific um, amount of work or a certain uh, deliverable, that's increasing. I mean, look what we're going through right, right now with COVID-19. Globally, again, another influence on how labor it, the, the, how, the requirement for labor and permanent full-time work is one of the forms. And it, it's one of those things that your second part of the question, what are the benefits? Yes. If you've been laid off during this pandemic and you're limiting your job search to full-time permanent work, you're doing yourself a disservice in my opinion. Mm -hmm. There are so many opportunities to expand beyond just permanent full-time work. I can fully appreciate. I mean, think about it. I think you've gone through this yourself where you had a permanent full-time yeah. job and it lasted for a short period of time because of the pandemic, right? Yeah. So permanent, no job is permanent. No job is permanent. They're all interim or temporary. 
So that, that thinking, uh, if you shift your thinking a little bit, you're really limiting yourself if you only look at full-time permanent work. And so some of the benefits are you're going to have access. Here's probably the most valuable thing that you'll get from working on an interim role. It's the people that you're going to meet, the relationships that you're going to form. You're also going to be, be exposed to new technologies, new processes, new ways of thinking about things yeah. that are going to round out your skill set and help you become more transferable to a variety of organizations. Um, so you really should be, in, again, in my opinion, looking at interim or temporary options yeah. in your job search. Yeah, and sometimes those contract or term, or short term, can turn into full time because you're already inside. You know the system. Absolutely, it trains you, and then if there's an opportunity, they will hire you for long term. I'll give I'll give you an example. We have a client in Calgary where they the, there was a company that was being bought. And so they brought somebody in, in a fairly high level accounting role to help them through the acquisition and, and working through the financial integration between those two companies. It was initially a four month contract that's now been extended to a year long and they've offered her a significant completion bonus because she's a critical member of their team. Now they don't want to see her leave. Yeah. And I was talking to her the other day on the phone. She's like, this is probably one of the best roles I've ever had in my career that I wouldn't have necessarily thought it would have worked out that way. Now they don't always, they don't, they don't always work that way. But again, if she would have had the mindset that, no, I'm only looking for this specific type of role, she would have missed the boat on that. I agree with you, but there's all, my first job was maternity leave. And when I got it, I said, why not let me get this experience? Because especially for new immigrants or people coming new to the country, they are kind of, discriminated, if I may say, by recruiters saying that, oh, you don't have Canadian experience or you don't have local experience. So may, the new immigrants should be open for that. But from your perspective, why this terminology, you don't have Canadian experience or you don't have local experience, why there's a lot of emphasis on that from recruiters? It's a, it's a, a, a it's a completely fair question and it's, it's frustrating. Whether it's right, or it's wrong, that's a separate conversation. You're right, it exists. Yeah. So the job seeker, you, 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 can, you can talk about how it's wrong, which I would agree, but that doesn't change the fact that it's something that you're gonna to have to work through and you're gonna to have to deal with. So the, Can the Canadian experience, really the underlying issue, well, there's, there's a couple things. If you're coming into a role where there are laws and regulations and compliance specific to Canada or specific to BC, and you don't have the knowledge of how that works. So for example, let's, let's imagine that you are a tax accountant mm. from wherever, yeah. and you come to Vancouver and you have no Canadian experience working with Canadian tax laws, that's a problem. Yeah. Or you're a lawyer. You're, it, it, the, the legal com component of what yeah. you do is critical. But let's set that aside. If you set those highly technical roles that have specific knowledge aside and you look at some of the underlying issues, the issue is familiarity. Mm. Familiarity. How familiar someone is with your background, the environment that you worked in, the cultural norms that you would have operated in, the way that work got done, part of the job when you come into a new, um, a new environment is to connect how familiar, help someone become familiar with what you've done. Yes. If, I, if I asked you about, you know, some of your favorite brands, if, if, if you said that your favorite brand, one of your favorite brands was Nike, you immediately have a familiarity mm -hmm. if it has that Nike logo on it, right? To a lesser effect, a resume and the company that you worked for, there's a similarity there. And if someone doesn't have a level of familiarity for it, like, so when you first came to Canada eight years ago, yes. if, if you worked for Nike, where you came from, and then you came to Vancouver, immediately someone would be familiar with Nike. Yeah. Right. So being, those are some of the things that, that, that work within that. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you for that. And I, 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 I agree. If you're a nurse or an engineer, 
you need to have those credentials, you need to have those degrees so that you can work. But let's say if you are a customer service or you are, I don't know, hairdresser or maybe other stuff, sometimes they, they are discriminated. And I always tell to my friends or whoever coming, like, take a contract job, have that Canadian experience, local experience on your resume and keep searching for your job that you like. But this is the system we need to work around it. And if you need to take courses or something, do it because that makes you, yeah. as you mentioned, you're familiar with the local universities, courses or whatever is happening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Jeremy. And for the audience watching for the first time, so you'll be kind of a journey with us. I'll ask Jeremy a couple of questions and which will be posted one question a day. So you can tune every day to see what we are talking. If you like any of the videos, like and share, subscribe to the channel and tune in next time for another question with Jeremy.